What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 20. We start days of stuff on the back of our loss to Chelsea as we approached halfway point in this season. Had an amazing start to the campaign, since then fallen off the pace a little bit and again the question marks remain where should we realistically be targeting this season? Now at the start of the campaign I was hoping to break into the top 10. Definitely the absolute minimum, a mid-table finish, you know like 11th, 12th, 13th, but the absolute minimum we're more than good enough for that and we're a young team growing all the time but after our incredible start I think I think sometimes this saying like I, I quite like it a victim of your own success you know sometimes you get a bit of an inflated ego where you've won a few on the bounce or you're starting to feel a little bit there's a great uh, lyric in uh, one of Drake's songs western road flows don't get hyped for the moment and start to backpedal Maybe I am ahead in the clouds a little bit when we started the season off. Maybe I forgot where we were last season. Because, yeah, six wins in a row to start the campaign. And since then, well, it's been a struggle. And heading into the first game, Osday's episode on our loss at the city ground to Graham Potter's Chelsea. Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park. And again, our problems laid bare. Palace scored the opener in the first half. And when I changed formation to a 4 1 2 1 2 diamond wide. Now, I said at the start of the season, I was going to experiment with some more formations this year. And I have done, but primarily during games as opposed to starting games. I went to a 4 and 2 and 2 wide. What I noticed was I started to get a few more chances but I was a little bit exposed through the middle. Thankfully though, after we went 2-0 down, we scored directly from kickoff. Ivan Tony the shocker, gave us a glimmer of hope with a few minutes to go, made it 2-1 and half deficit. The question was, would we have enough time to salvage a point? Well, from Palace's kickoff, Rodri Brown wings it back. We're on the offensive. Last chance of the game as we enter stoppage time, Solanke. Quick ball through to MGW. Lovely first time layoff. He's done it once again. The shocker, Ivan Tony, with two late goals. Guess what? Look at this camera angle, by the way. This is absolute class. And the late goal celebrations in FIFA now. I mentioned so many times, but when they're situation specific, they are absolutely class. And this one definitely was Ivan Tony, the shocker. With the composure for his second stoppage time equaliser already this season. Can you believe that? Second stoppage time equaliser already. And two of his goals in this game came in the final three minutes as we rescued a point from 2-0 down in the final five minutes of the game. The shocker, my hero, my mate. I love him to pieces. And, you know, I, I haven't ranked my career mode saves. I haven't ranked my career mode heroes because I often say, like, there's just so many we've done together over the past decade. There's been so many amazing heroes, so many amazing saves. You ask me on a different day, I'll give you a different opinion as to who's my all-time GOAT. But if Tony's not in the top five, something's wrong. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He always seems to do it when it matters most. Second time this season already, he's popped up with a stoppage time leveller. Did it in Molyneux, does it at Selhurst Park. So, yeah, second game. Oh, so he's just sort of on the back of the draw at Crystal Palace. Again, struggling patch of form with Forrest. We haven't been consistent since that six-game winning run at the start of the campaign. Taking on Vincent Company's Burnley here at the City Ground. Newly promoted, desperately needed to return to any ways in this game here and we got the opener through Brennan Johnson in the first half you might have noticed it one of our loanees Dave Bell the youngster who came out of the academy with potential to be special has now had his uh, potential downgraded we've loaned him to Burnley for a couple of years he's been starting the majority of the games of the turf more started this one as well a little bit unrealistic, unfortunately, but can't do anything about it. But even so, thankfully, he might be a giant, but in this game, he and his backline did not hold themselves to a very good stand. I was opening them up so, so easily. I was 17 minutes to go after. Scott McKenna scored his first goal to save. Scott the block made it 2-0. Dominic Solanke in from the cherry. He's got his first in a Nottingham Forest shirt as he wrapped it up from four yards out. That goal as well. Where was the marking? Dave Bell. Agent Dave Bell. Not marking tightly. We'll take the comfortable 3-0 victory. So, 
Glad to bounce back with a win there, and Lord knows I needed it on Christmas Eve. That was my Christmas present, and I got it back to winning ways. And as we now approach the, uh, as, as now we enter the official halfway point in the season, Chelsea top two points clear of Man City, three clear of Manchester United, and Aston Villa are currently in the fourth right now. We're only a point behind them though. Level with Liverpool with 36, and only one point behind Steven Gerrard's side. Ten wins in 19 games. We've already got as many wins as we had last season altogether. Halfway through this season. And you see the bottom three right now, Brighton, Norwich and Sheffield United winless to start the campaign off. Uh, Zahar and Diaz leading the way in the race of the Golden Boot. Rodri Brown's assist in that game there against Burnley. Sees him top of the assist charts right now with seven. And Dean Henderson after another clean sheet there. 11 in 19 games. I think it's safe to say we made the right call bringing him back from Old Trafford. Yeah, our defence this season has been the big bonus. You know, last season we were the joint worst defensive record in the division. This year, Henderson's got more clean sheets than anyone else. Our defence really picked up. Our form has been very inconsistent. We won our first six, but now just four wins in our last 13 games. Yeah, big win there against Burnley, but averaging what, uh, less than one win in every three right now. We've struggled for form recently. We need to respond. And for our following game here, aims to make it back-to-back -back wins for the first time in a while. Wolverhampton Wanderers fell behind early. Through Yanis Shaji, uh, obviously the uh, the son of a legend, former Ranger striker, makes it 1-0. And I, I really failed to get going in this game. Wolves dominated possession. I only really got the one chance. Brennan Johnson going through. And when I tried to round the goalkeeper, and you would have noticed that this year I've barely tried rounding the goalkeeper whatsoever because I just can't seem to get it right this year. You know, I, I don't I do not do it very often. I used to do it a lot. I used to do it an awful lot going through 1-1. One one, but nowadays I prefer a straight smash at the near post or a finesse. But... I tried to round a goalkeeper there, Jose Sarr, and took it way too far wide and put it into the side netting. I find rounding the goalkeeper now is an incredibly tricky thing to do, I must say. But anyway, following game on the back of the loss there at home, Aston Villa away, Steven Gerrard's side. Bit of pressure on Gerrard in real life, of course, after the draw against Nottingham Forest on Monday night. A lot of the fans thinking he needs to go, simply put, hasn't done it in the post Grealish era, and it's time for him to leave. Otherwise, the fans are fearful Villa might be in a relegation scrap this season. Well, Philip Coutinho looks a shadow of his former self when he was first on loan at Aston Villa. Opened the score of his 12th of the season. Old mates, old teammates at Liverpool. And now Gerrard coaching him at Villa Park, of course. He got the opener. Then Aston Villa went tuning up. And quite frankly, whilst my defence has improved this year, no one can deny that. This was a game where... Oh God, what on earth is going on here? I mean, seriously, like Coutinho just walked around my yellow shirts as if they weren't even defenders, and it was just static out there, or flows to Lucas Digne, and the former Everton left back makes it 3-0. What was I saying a moment ago about how my defence has improved this year? Yeah, this is one of those games where, frankly, I didn't get it right. We did get a consolation goal, four minutes to go, uh, Brennan Johnson getting a goal, <laughs> celebration was hilarious though, a bit of a glitch here. Went to pick up the ball, and uh, he just legged it. <laughs> He went to pick up the ball, and the camera panned to the angle to show him picking up the ball, but instead he thought, ah, forget it, it's 3-1, we ain't got enough time. Just ran around like Endless Chicken in what was a 3-1 defeat there. Carved open way too easily, and back-to-back -back losses against Wolves and an Aston Villa. So not the way we wanted to close out December. We dropped to seventh in the table and from one point to now six behind fourth place. Yeah, Chelsea still leading the way at the heart, uh, 21 games in, but we're now six points behind Manchester City, our next opponents in fourth place. And as January arrives, so you see our fixtures for the calendar year of 2022. Uh, Peterborough United away at London Road in the FA Cup third round. Then Man City, Liverpool and Brighton all at home. And on the back of what has been a, a really inconsistent run of form for Nottingham Forest. Four wins in, I think, 15 games now. I think it's four wins in 15. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to worry a little bit, I'm not going to lie. And we had an incredible start to the season and, and, and now, right now, clinging on to a European place. I mean, listen, we weren't going to keep that form up forever. Six wins in six, six clean sheets in six. That was a glitch in the matrix, you know. <laughs> Felt like a fever dream. We weren't going to keep it up forever and this is just our second season. But let's be honest here, regardless of how you started the campaign, Four wins in 15 games, I think it is now. That's going to worry anyone. So, following game, and I desperately needed this. FA Cup, third round, last 64 clash away at London Road against the posh Peterborough United. I had to start the shocker for this, of course, because who did he play for before he signed for Brentford? This very team. Yep, he made a name for himself at this very ground. 
I signed him with my Sheffield United career mode from the posh. He had a great goal to game ratio at London Road. And of course, since moving Peterborough, he's never looked back. And of course, I had to start him for this game back at his old stomping ground for the first time. And well, we saw on Saturday, didn't we? You know, he scored at St James's Park, his former team, uh, from the spot against, uh, against Newcastle with Brentford. He likes to score against his old teams. What can I say? Open the scoring here against Peterborough. Jesse Lingard then made it 2-0. Minute of break. We're in complete control here. Cup sets in FIFA career mode, as we know, are quite common. But I felt despite our inconsistent run of four, we were going to be okay. And we were. 12 minutes after the restart, we made it free. And that would do it. Taiwo with the goal gives us a free goal lead. And the, the, uh, the progress is secured. And, you know, obviously, we, we got dumped out of the uh, Carabao Cup in the second round by uh, Swansea City at the start of the season. And we had a great run to the final four last year. We got to the Carabao Cup semi-finals last year. I'd, I'd love a good cup run in the FA Cup this year. The Carabao Cup run last year was probably our highlight of the season, if I'm being honest. I'd love a good FA Cup run this year. Last season, got to the last 32. This round, we're entering the FA Cup fourth round before we were humbled by Spurs away in North London. And we got a cracking tie for the fourth round as well. Leicester away at the King Power East Midlands Derby. Bring on Brendan Rodgers side. Cannot wait for that one there. It seems like every time we face Leicester, it's a really feisty affair. I mean, we've played them three times now. The games last year were amazing. We had that 5-1 loss, I think it was, at the King Power, or 5-2 loss at the King Power. That was a devastating defeat, but a really great game. And the game at home, we, we won, uh, where, of course, uh, it was a really feisty affair. Relegation, six points. Uh, this season we beat them 2 at home in our first home game of the season every time we face Leicester it's a good action packed dramatic game hoping for the same there in the last 32 but for our final game of today's episode Manchester City champions of England in real life of course taking on Guardiola's side in fourth place right now Man City are a weird one in FIFA career mode, aren't they? Like, sometimes they can walk the league, and then other times they underperform massively. At the moment, in fourth place this season, and taking them on the City ground, well, despite winning away at London Road against the Posh in the FA Cup third round, back-to-back -back losses in the Premier League, fearing the worst heading into this game, and... Well, I'll be honest, this is one of those games where you just don't get the luck. We fell behind and did level it soon afterwards. Great cross by Rodri to find Brennan Johnson, but City would restore the lead for a rebound goal. Great save by Henderson initially, but Milinkovic Savage turning in the rebound. And 33 minutes in, great save once again by Dean in for a busy afternoon here. Keeping it at 2 1 from the corner, whipped into the middle, and Rodrigo heads home to make it 3 1. Three new signings in the save for Man City, all getting the goals. Lamar, Milinkovic, Savic, and now Rodrigo as well. So 3-1 down at the break. Unfortunately, defensively, like I said, Henderson had 11 clean sheets, but none are going to be in his last three games here because we've been torn open in our last two. Obviously, you can see the three at Villa Park and our three here at home as well. We got back in the game, though, through Forest style of football. Rodri Brown, all-out attack in this save, as we know, made it 3-2. The kid, with his second of the season, gets us back in the game. But unfortunately, well, I'll be totally honest here. We were getting exposed down the left flank because I just kept on bombing Rodri so far at the pitch. And again, the game where nothing really went right for him. Didn't really get the luck. 20 minutes to go. This was so unfortunate. Henderson goes to palm away a drill cross into the middle. It deflects off Jaden Bogle. And who's there? Six yards out. Phil Foden drops straight to the kid who turns in from close range. So 4-2 to the final score. And you would have seen it at the full-time whistle. Booze at the city ground. And our honeymoon period at the start of the campaign seems like a distant memory now six wins in a row to start the season off but what a poor run of form since then just four in again i believe our last 16 games averaging one in every four it has been a tough tough run of form for forest and the question is now the january window's open do we make a big move or do we trust our team will get it sorted as we drop out of the European places? With that, we're in today's episode of Krimmer, guys. Big fan of your fortune. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.